Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achint. Guys, today I have someone really special with me, Mr. N.C. Bipindra, who's going to tell us about Chinese influence operations. We recently know that there is a thing that happened with the News Click magazine. We also know there are a lot of people within India who back for the Chinese. They write for the Chinese, they speak for the Chinese, and they do a lot of stuff for the Chinese. What we need to try and understand is how do we map this? How do we understand this? And how do we, of course, fight it? So we'll talk about news click. We'll talk about some Chinese spies. We'll talk about some Chinese operations. We'll talk about a couple of th more things. And of course, your questions, guys, most importantly. So, sir, Namaskar, welcome, good evening, and uh, glad to have you back on the show. Namaskar, Adi. It's a, it's a pleasure. Welcome to everybody uh, from my home state. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure being on uh, Dev Talks with you. And uh, we have done a couple of sessions before. They were received very well. And it's, it's a pleasure to be here and to be answering questions from your audience. Uh, your well-received audience there, uh, quite discerning a lot. And uh, of course, you have very insightful questions yourself. So it's, it's a pleasure to be talking to you. Thank you. Guys, first thing, please check out Sir's book. It talks, Sir, just Google Sir and you'll find the book right there. Read it through. It's a short little crisp little thing. You'll probably be able to go through it in about an hour or two. Take a fast reader like me, about two hours max. It's all it takes. But it tells you a lot about what the Chinese do and how the Chinese can kind of think. Very important for us to understand that. So, sir, let's open up with news clicks. Sir. Watch this game. I mean, we know what has come out in the public domain. There was funding, chanding, this, that, all that stuff. What is your analysis for some from someone who actually maps this Chinese influence within the country? So, how do you look at what happened with news uh, news click? In fact, uh, when this thing broke out, I, uh, I it didn't surprise me in fact because. Uh, uh, you know, the, for the kind of uh, coverage that News Click had been doing for a while, particularly during 2020 COVID era uh, reportage that they did and uh, the the kind of plugs that they were doing for China for a long while, it didn't surprise me to know that they are funded by the Chinese. So essentially, uh, how I see it is that uh, uh, News Click is one of the it's actually a tip of the iceberg. There are there are lots and lots of uh, organizations, media organizations, uh, think tanks, academia, you name them. All of them are there. And the, and the iceberg that you don't see is much, much larger down below the waters. So that's the kind of scenario that I see. Uh, and of course, it's a good start. The government action against News Click is a good start. And... Um, uh, the essentially what has happened is that uh, some people have sold their souls essentially hmm. to uh, do gadari against india that's the that's the uh, you know underlying uh, bottom line uh, of it all if you look at it uh, specifically so news click is one of the one of the gadars uh, you know that have been functioning out of india is mitigi namak kake you know so that is the kind of action that they have been doing. So they have been uh, backstabbing India uh, by this kind of action. Uh, you know, one of the things, factors that have contributed to this is that, I mean, News Click is a 2018, uh, you know, phenomena. Essentially, hmm. they started in 2018 and they have been working since then. So most of these... Uh, Though the Chinese influence operations have been going on for a while, at least a decade or more, uh, they have been working on India uh, specifically. But uh, post-2014, this, uh, this anger against Modi, the personal hate against Modi, the Prime Minister, uh, as, as kind of, uh, you know, uh, it, it's a, it has evolved into an uh, anti-India rant. And then I hand the India feeling among these people who feel so delusioned by the electorate uh, giving him two massive majority victories. So I see basically I'm a, a non-partisan person, but you know, what I see, the kind of hatred that they have for Prime Minister Modi, 
that is being reflected in the anti india postering anti india stand that they are taking and the anti india action that they are doing at this point in time uh, in the name of opposing this government so you know that's where the 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 thin line uh, differentiates between uh, gadari and uh, doing a anti government activity anti political party activity so there is a very fine thin line that divides this two and it's very easy to cross the lines uh, to uh, we you know without even realizing it that's the kind of danger that uh, that is being exposed by this news click episode i mean that is interesting that you you mentioned and you you've been very specific about the danger i want to ask you sir one is the factor that these guys uh, you know not just take money but they literally tout the chinese line which is harmful to their own setup within the country and that is very amazing to me because they really feel that uh, this kind of penetration will not be caught right and that's the audacity of of this setup now i want to ask you there are multiple more sir which are which are there and we know a lot of people have been called out funnily speaking today i see a very interesting game that a lot of these chinese tourists play is that they talk about nationalism and they they they'll be very hardcore nationalist so that not to arouse a certain you know uh uh i bro anywhere so you'll find them talking about very popularist nationalist things but slipping in that little chinese narrative in the middle and i've seen that happening multiple times now in a lot of reading and a lot of youtube shows and this and that how do you see is that a tactic change or what is what is happening here sir see uh, i want to borrow uh, a particular concept from islam to you know make people understand what this is all about it's called as the takia principle i don't know if you have heard of this principle in islam where uh, you know it's uh, even hadith in hadiths it has been sanctioned that you can lie about your religion or you can even say that i don't follow islam uh, just to deceive the other person and then uh, basically you can lie in for the sake of islam against islam itself that's the takia principle essentially so basically you be fool uh, the other guy to thinking that you are not a hardcore islamist and then you attack him when the person is uh, you know completely you know he is off guard that that is the takia principle so this this principle is being adopted even by the communists please essentially communism is no different from a religion let us understand that so all these left leaning people who talk about nationalism and stuff like that and people who try to insert these uh, these uh, you know ideas the communist uh, pegs that they that they insert into their uh, narrative the chinese narrative that they insert it's all essentially a um, cover effort to be fool yeah essentially to cover their tracks and to be fool people into thinking that they are nationalist and they are this and that and that uh, despite all these views they have this kind of a very uh, you know uh, progressive so called progressive views so that's the uh, you know basic principle about this they will lie you know they will do all sorts of uh, you know effort to be fool others to peddle their narrative in whatever ma- means they want this constitutional nationalism that a lot of people talk about today is is basically a very uh, uh what do you call it it's a very uh, dangerous game that they're playing okay so they they essentially want to make people think that they are hardcore people who follow the constitution to the t whereas the first opportunity that they get they will be the first people to change and attack the constitution and probably change it and make it into a autocracy uh, at some point in time so that's that is the kind of people these people are so there is no difference between the hardcore 
you know uh, radicalized islam and the hardcore radicalized communist let's be very clear about it they are one and the same so that is so, why you see the left left islam uh, coordination and cooperation in various places globally it's not just in india it's not just a phenomenon in india and kerala or in places where there is a good number of large number of islamists but also in other parts of the world like for example this hamas israel conflict that is happening at this point in time mm-hmm. if you look at the protests that are going on in various university campuses and in in on the streets in various european countries and in the americas you will find the left is standing beside the people who are supporting the hamas's terrorism yeah. that happened against yeah. israel so it's a, it's a you know uh, it is easy for them to cooperate and coordinate till the time there are no nobody else left and only the two of them are left to fight out for the uh, for the whatever is left over at that point in time the the power or whatever the resources that are left at that point in time till the time only the two forces are left the left forces and the islamist forces are left they will do all sorts of coordination and cooperation it's very clear then they will fight fight among themselves yeah i mean that that is a stage that uh, they don't anticipate at this point in time see that fight will happen only if all of the forces are gone if all of the ideas and ideologies are gone right so that stage will never come because so, uh, the indian bharatiya ideas are never going to die they are going to exist so till that time yeah coordination and cooperation will continue <laughs> let's be very clear about it they've tried people have tried it for hundreds and thousands of years so not happened as of now and i don't yeah, think it never happened it can never happen yeah so let's let's i mean i want to dig a little deeper into this 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 whole leftist thing that you've mentioned today we see a very very interesting change in the leftist and i want to understand how do you think that the chinese game will change because of that because you know we see the left is weakening down today and the chinese used to use the leftist ecosystem in its you know this thing and the chinese three warfare game to use your systems against you you know and that's what right. the chinese yeah. do so the chinese use the left against the 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 established setup world order today how do you think that is happening in india today sir and do you see a connection between the indian left and china of course they have strong connects i mean the the essential root of uh, communist parties in india communist ecosystem in india has always drawn its strength from when the ussr existed from ussr and after the ussr collapse from china even before the collapse of the ussr happened the actual divide in the communist party of india happened into you know cpi and the cpim happened because of the chinese influence so uh, you know, who wants to be closer to china so that's the that was the uh, you know came that prevent they in that actually led to their uh, breaking up the two communist parties emerging in india and uh, so that is history so let's let's leave history out but mm. what is it happening at this point in time in india so they may be a weak force politically they may not be able to get themselves elected and even states that they ruled for 30 years west bengal they cannot imagine to come back to power again ever okay the only place where they are currently in strength is kerala even there you know if you if you look at the political culture there there is always a, a cease of battle that happens every time uh, uh, you know either the communist party come to power or the the next election the congress party comes to power so there is that thing happens even there so in tripura again in india they have lost they are not going to come back to power yeah. because that entire political dynamics has changed so politically mm-hmm. they are irrelevant in india at this point in time maybe they'll get a few handful of mps uh, and maybe one government in kerala every 10 years once so uh, that's the kind of uh, every 5 years 10 years once they might get a uh, you know get into power in kerala so that is their position but even in kerala things are fast changing uh, it's it's a big big problem for the communists it's a big headache for them uh, you will you will get to know when when the things happen in the years to come 
so they are going to become irrelevant team in, in kerala in in a few years from now so uh, politically they are dead but what is enabling them and what is essentially keeping them going is the left of center forces that exist in india which do not identify themselves as communists but essentially they are the ecosystem they have set up a big ecosystem that is enabling them what is the fight what is news click what is all these the wire and what is all this uh, the hindu and all that it, they are all essentially the part of the ecosystem they have thrived under the left of center government that has prevailed in the past and now they are out of relevance they have a problem they have a resource crunch and all that and that is that is an anger that is reflecting on prime minister modi and it is now uh, evolving itself into a anti india posturing so this ecosystem is what is uh, thriving essentially they though the resources have come down within india the resources are being pumped from outside india like what has happened with news click they got about uh, 90 crore rupees in over a period of 4 uh, years from uh, from uh, in the chinese sources so ed found out about uh, 30 40 lakh uh, you know 40 crore rupees of income and uh, the other investigating agencies have found another 70 uh, you know crore income from chinese sources from foreign sources so uh, this is essentially the problem so now uh, how are they thriving they are thriving essentially from funding that is happening from abroad correct so including including anti india forces like the khalistani forces pakistan all of them are pumping in money against <clears throat> this government and against this country's interest everywhere so that is what is keeping them thriving and uh, the the left ecosystem uh, is essentially it will continue to thrive in this country till the time we have uh, uh, you know we we don't have a very strong government that acts against them uh, in the manner that is required this government is doing something some action is being taken but that is definitely not enough mm. because the the amount of the number of people and institutions that have exposed if the government start act, acting on all of them there will be a huge angama in this in this country <laughs> so uh, there will be street violence i'm telling you there will be uh, rioting everything will happen if the uh, government start act, acting on each of each and every organization and individual that we have exposed in that report I don't know if I answered your question. If uh, no, sir, I mean, I you you put me into another thought, which is actually now making me ask you another question. Is that uh, you know this this whole setup of the Chinese influence within India is 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 has found a certain place as we have discussed now within the left and within the communist system, which which I wonder why it kind of um, is in India because it's 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 very irrelevant in this today scenario. but in any case let's accept it as a given my point is that when you see a a, a setup of, of a chinese touting system within india and there are loads of people that keep writing you know oh china will beat us in 10 days they will take arunachal they will do this they will do that this whole 10 feel tall syndrome which which has been there now people have realized that something like this happens but are we there in terms of a society to try and identify even i mean i am not saying a general guy on the road can identify but generally speaking do you see analysts able to identify between chinese based news which is spinning propaganda or the western chinese based news which is spinning prop- propaganda again and i I'll, i'll give you a small note which is canada a mm. lot of it, a lot of stuff that happens there happens at the behest of the mss yeah uh, so how do you see this 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 thing building up sir see uh, uh let's let's take the canada example for example you know let's take the canada example 
in canada there have been a huge storm over political interference of china in the recent past particularly in the last elections where they they, they kind of uh, uh, you know try to influence put money into the election campaign of uh, uh, justin trudeau and all that so what is the quid pro quo that is happening because of that the quid pro quo is that uh, the justin trudeau government is acting against dissident chinese whom the uh, the communist party of china uh, wants the mss in particular wants to be extradited or to be acted against or neutralized so this this kind of a quid pro quo is happening under the justin trudeau government i have recently written an article on this particular episode so on this particular aspect of how uh, this thing is happening out there in uh, in uh, operation fox uh, right uh it's called as uh, yeah must be operation fox i i'm not able to put my finger on that particular aspect uh, yeah but so this kind of yeah i think it's operation fox so they have done this uh, uh in the recent times uh and justin trudeau government has been cooperating with them in the last two terms now so there is an element of uh you know uh, uh, what do you call it is uh capitulation by by justin trudeau government as far as the chinese pressure is concerned in this in this regard so uh, uh, you know e- even in uh, india if you look at it uh, this ecosystem which i talked about uh, so the, you know uh, i have a feeling that uh, i'm sorry uh, adi i'm uh, there is a, I'm, i just want to can you just recall that question once again please i am i'm, I'm, so I'm basically wanting to yeah 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 i'm i'm basically wanting to know see now there is a ecosystem that you mentioned you know which which kind yeah. of creates this whole chinese narrative and it is done so brazenly that people you know this thing one i, I have people been able to identify and say okay here are certain sources within in india that tout the chinese language for whatever yeah, reason yeah yeah the yeah, government correct. has done something correct. about it or not is a different story altogether so how do you kind of see yeah yeah this, yeah this yeah, right that was the first part of your question yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah. remember now i recall now yeah so uh, essentially okay so we talked about the chinese example in canada let's talk about india whether are they able to identify these people see except for uh, people with this kind of a uh, strategic affairs consciousness like people like you or people from the military background people with diplomatic service background or people with international relations studies background people who have interest in the, this kind of a subject not many people take interest in the subject in india it's a very minuscule minority population that takes interest in the subject so national security itself is not a big deal subject for No, till the time it is the, the, i'll tell you the till the time is not trivial na so it doesn't have a little uh, fun to it yeah, to exactly. i mean yeah. if there is so, no sensational in, sensationalism to it then people are not interested in it so people don't really care so what is the basic source of knowledge of indians today the basic source of knowledge is the newspaper or maybe television channels or maybe the short news items that come people's is reading capacities have gone down drastically gone down hmm. so so their attention span is so low today that they don't want to read beyond two or three lines in a in a in a news app that uh, that that is on their mobile phone so that is the kind of interest that they have when that is the scenario it's only a minuscule minority who will be able to understand and identify these kind of people these kind of activities that are going on where people are peddling the chinese narrative people are pig, you know plugging the chinese uh, Uh, you know uh, ideas the communist ideas into the into the indian society so this this thing happens or identification can happen only with a very minuscule uh, minority uh, among the population that is a big big weakness that we have so uh, essentially what happens is most other the other see like let's say if it is only a 2% of the population in india were conscious of this factor the rest 98% are gullible and they are vulnerable to be influenced so like for example today wokeism is a big big deal in many of the uh, university campuses in india okay 
so uh, uh the wokeism is like for example the latest example is the amas israel conflict first and foremost they want to vilify israel as an aggressor as an occupier and all that but they don't want to condemn the amas uh, october 7 terror attacks okay this is a kind of attitudes that have been developed by wokeism and uh, this is the kind of attitude mentality that has been injected into their minds by the leftists ecosystem in india left is ecosystem in india so it is very very difficult when they have been brainwashed then then when they have been made to think in a particular manner for them to analyze these kind of threats that exist uh, from an enemy country I mean whether you have diplomatic relations with them or not they are your enemy number 1 as george fernandez said uh, you know 20 years back 2022 mm-hmm. years back okay they are your enemy number 1 let us be very clear about it they don't want an india a rising india they want to put you down so when that is the situation understanding this is a big big weakness today because yeah. the majority of the population in india and 98% of the population is vulnerable and ignorant or they have been brainwashed into thinking in a particular manner so that's the problem why have we become simps to chinese uh, this thing so now <laughs> you know which is what i i keep asking myself so these these so called chinese i mean okay let me let me paint another scenario what i've seen sir especially with the ukraine war a lot of westerners came out and supported russia rightly so even i did because this war was unfair on the russians uh but we soon realized that the westerners who were supporting russia are actually speaking the chinese language because the minute yeah. the reference to the chinese bri comes in oh the china china will china will do this china will do that even during the war in ukraine the same is a war in israel the same analysts are now touting the fact that oh the chinese diplomacy is working wonders and you wonder there has been no diplomacy from the chinese side at all except for recrimination what are these guys trying to do so have domestic domestic political interests not just in india but even abroad got mixed up with the hatred of one's own country rather than one's own system which is being exploited by china today sir see it is not just about political advantages that they that accrues to them see if you uh, look at justin trudeau justin trudeau in canada why is he uh, you know kowtowing to uh, to china's uh, demands and wishes it is essentially because there is also a financial angle to it his party gets funded by the chinese at some level so uh, you know they also help him uh, with trade and economic ties that that uh, that will come come in when if he governs canada so these are all some of the uh, quid pro quo that happens if you fall in line and and uh, follow the dictates that come from beijing right so it's not just about uh, the the uh, the political factors but there is also an element of financial factor which helps them politically <laughs> so that also comes into play i mean this is canada's as example the same thing happens in india also yeah like for example why why do you think uh, the congress party is willing to to the chinese line rahul gandhi goes to ladakh and says that uh, you know demoralizes the indian army by saying that no no the chinese have crushed you black and blue and all that why does he do that i mean i'm just paraphrasing i'm not quoting him exactly but this is what he intend to do say when he was in ladakh right why is he doing that i will take you back to the 2008 uh, agreement mou that they signed with the ccp what is that agreement the rajiv gandhi foundation received huge sums of money from the from the chinese embassy in delhi as donations and what is that funds being used for okay i i heard something which which i am yet to confirm so i am not going to talk about it about the karnataka elections right now mm. okay how how money flowed so uh, essentially i am not going to because i am yet to confirm that information that i have received but there are indicators 
that money flowed uh, to essentially to influence uh, the elections yeah so uh, that is how and that is why uh, these political parties the justin trudeau's and uh, uh, is fondly called as justinder <laughs> by his opponents so uh, and <laughs> right here on def talk sir of course justinder and uh, uh, rahul, rahul baba and all why are they towing the line uh, there is some kind of a quid pro quo that happens at some level and it both it both helps them uh, politically and also helps them uh, financially so there is without that weakness you know roka weakness uh, nothing of this sort can happen actually so that is the determining factor roka is the de- de- determining factor in, in the political posturing that these people do just whether it is jastender or uh, uh, baba uh, it is it is there and it is the same with the communist parties also the communist parties cannot survive in india with just the funds they collect with that uh, that undi that they go around collecting okay so in fact uh, see we are talking about news click it's not just about news click you look at in fact my report names a lot of people okay all of them are being funded uh, in some manner or the other by the chinese i'll give you one example how do the funding happens i think that is a good question that will come up in everybody's mind so it's essentially through the avala route avala i think people understand nevil roy singham lives in shanghai he gets the money there but there is an indian trader who does trade via shanghai and he sits in a has a private limited company in noida okay and that noida private limited company which has a trading links with shanghai will pay a certain amount of money to rajiv sharma a, a journalist who has been arrested for having chinese links and ta- having taken chinese money okay and how is this trader in uh, noida compensated he is compensated while he is doing trade in shanghai he is an export importer trader so he is he is favored and given all sorts of uh, favors compensation while he is in shanghai avala route okay that is why uh, the news click is also uh, being investigated they received money from some entity which has a chinese connection some uh, came in came in highlands or a marushia's root company they have taken money from there and they uh, they get it they show it as some service i don't understand in fact i was reading one interesting report on this uh, news click thing their electrician who does annual maintenance of the electric electric uh, you know wires and stuff like that uh, electronic goods in their office received some 25 lakh rupees that's hmm. about 2 lakh rupees a month why did he receive that money from news click they pay him and <laughs> take it back in some other route from that fellow okay hmm. so this is the kind of uh, financial uh, you know uh, gum you know this kind of uh, uh, fraud that they have committed financial fraud that they have committed that is why they are today facing action okay what is the great contribution of some of the writers or right what is the contribution of uh, navalaka gautam navalaka to news click except maybe for writing some articles he receives 40 lakh rupees what at the rate of what you you know you understand uh, how the funding happens to this ecosystem yeah navalaka again you know uh, elgar parishad uh, uh, you know the case that he is facing right now for uh, uh, for the naxal activity that they that he did yeah yeah and yeah. for having connections with gulam nabi uh, fay who is an isi agent agent ha huh? uh, navalaka has connections with them that is that is why he is facing this trouble today so the funding happens in this this route okay the other route that they employ is direct funding through the embassy the media the hindu the hindustan times and all publish annually they publish some uh, you know four or five 
full page ads ads of chinese, chinese and congratulations to xi jinping on becoming the the new the emperor of china president. Of hmm. new emperor <laughs> all this this funding happens so direct funding by the chinese embassy or of or you know observer research foundation receives huge funding you received huge funding from received uh, the not embassy anymore the but consul. yeah received that's why i'm clarifying that so now they have changed the stand after yeah. the expose yeah. that we did so uh, so they received money huge crores and crores of money okay from uh, the delhi embassy and also their consulate in kolkata consulate in kolkata so essentially these are the direct routes i told you the indirect route the other indirect route that they adopt is um like for example there are think tanks which come out with uh, like say china times i'm just giving you a very fictional name okay there are several such publications today china today china times they come out with publications china monthly so they will ask one journalist who is favorable to them you bring out this mag so 20 page 25 page 30 page 40 page mag monthly mag or annually twice a mag and they will pay him for the work that they have editorial work that they have done on that magazine and it will be uh, the money that is being paid is not commensurate with the kind of work that they do <laughs> you understood what i'm saying so yeah, yeah. it's essentially yeah i mean there is one magazine defense magazine published from noida which has an office in noida uh, and uh, uh, run by a for a, by a former army officer a court if i may sorry sir a court martial former army officer the guy was like what <laughs> dishonorably discharged okay that that fellow is magazine doesn't run, run at all he doesn't get any advertisements is support from the indian armed forces which used to get earlier have, have dried up zero because of his now it is zero earlier you used to get i know i'm aware of it so it has dried up because they understood his is uh, antecedents and this background now so they stopped it and how is he functioning even today he goes to china on trips on sponsored trips annually he attends several events abroad who is funding all this the money is coming from the chinese embassy in some form in some route there has to be some investigation against this fellow okay so uh, i can name several such people during the ladakh conflict there was one former army colonel was receiving daily briefings from the chinese embassy yep. and peddling those as stories in, in the news in the business news paper that he works for okay so i mean you named uh, there are other army officer former army officer also now they had to leave expressly had to leave uh, the newspaper and uh, had to move to something tanks they were all peddling it peddling the chinese uh, side of the story okay so now they have a pathological hatred for india now because it elected twice they elected mr narendra mm. modi as the partner that they got caught in a large aspect of it so they hate us yeah they hate us they they've been uh, they've been part of the ecosystem for a very long time okay so that ecosystem is being demolished by this government the ngos who were the funding routes for uh, these foreign uh, neville roy singhams and uh, george soros's their activity is being uh, curtailed by this government because they were doing all sorts of hanky panky things in india they were essentially interfering in the indian affairs all these foreign amnesties and uh, bullshits uh, pardon my language so no 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 not at all sir so these these guys have have essentially you know been uh, uh, what do you call it they've been uh, you know put into a corner by this government by its 
uh, strict action against them, punitive action against those people who have been uh, interfering in the internal affairs of India. So because of which they are angry about this government. They have a hatred and now it has turned into a pathological hatred against mm. this government, mm. against mm. the prime minister and uh, this nation. Ultimately, it's affecting the nation. So, so that is where uh, this this uh, this trend is moving towards now. So, uh, if uh, Danish Kaneria invites somebody to live in Pakistan, he becomes communal. <laughs> so, that's the kind of uh, trend that we see today. Uh, all these people are. They are in for more trouble. That's that one. That's what I would say. <laughs> they shouldn't rest uh, easy now. In fact, uh, there is one thing I wanted to mention. If Sir. Nivel Roy Singham issued a clarification statement, a long statement recently regarding the Indian government's action against News Click. I don't know if you got the opportunity to read it, and it was published in only one Global Times, uh, published from Chennai. <laughs> okay, so Global Times Chennai edition was the only <laughs> newspaper which published it. Okay, and uh, the edit, the former editor of that Global Times was so ecstatic putting it out on Twitter that yes, we have published Neville Roy Singham's statement. Please read it. It's a, it's some great statement that he has issued. Okay, which thief says that yes, I am a thief? Okay, Neville Roy Singham is he going to admit? Ha, huh, yes, I, <laughs> I took money from Chinese and funded funded uh, news click or anybody else. There has, there will be a proper investigation against him, against Neville Roy Singham and anybody else who has taken money from him through a, whatever route that they have taken money from. You know, uh, the most important thing which I can infer from all this stuff is that there was an opportunity at a certain time, probably a decade or something like that before, when the Chinese were kind of, you know, uh, invited into the country. Okay. For whatever reason, monetary or otherwise. And mm -hmm. the Chinese were able to infiltrate but not as bad. The Chinese have not been able to get in as bad as what they've gone into the West. There's no question. They've been able to infiltrate into the certain system. Now, sir, coming to the point where we as citizens need to start identifying what is a Chinese narrative and what is an, a Bharatiya narrative, if I may say this. Why I'm saying this is because, as I said, I find a lot of cloaked foxes around the place. You know, if you ask them, oh, uh, if I was hearing a conversation the other day, I reading a conversation, and yeah, hearing, reading, I have one of the two. I get a little bit confused nowadays. I've taken so much of content. Uh, this person actually mentioned that, oh, BRI had nothing to do with IMEC. You know, the Mediterranean uh, Transport Corridor and the Belt and Road. And he said, no, 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 they both are complementary to each other. They both are not against each other. When I read that, I said, this is what the Russian said. <laughs> you know, and today the Russians are speaking the Chinese language because they need to stand together. They yeah. have issues they've got there. It's, a, it's now, a geopolitical compulsion. It's a geopolitical compulsion. Now, this is something that amazes me that people are picking up stuff which is not pro-China, but on the line so that nobody calls them out. Has this whole game, you know, this is just an example, has this whole game changed in its way that you will now have Chinese narrative being spread into the country using a very Bharatiya aspect and using a very Bharatiya cloak to it. Rather than an English newspaper, it'll be a guy in Hindi. Yeah, I think, see... Uh, local language media, local language narrative has always been a focus of uh, the Chinese in India. 
okay so they have always done it they have been very conscious of the fact that uh, uh, the english speakers and english language readers are not that many in number in india and essentially it is the uh, local languages indian languages that that are uh, spoken or written and read in large numbers in fact uh, they are so understand that it is the local newspapers local language newspapers which sell much much more than the english thing so they have been focusing on that for a very long time uh, there are a lot of if you you know watch or read the local uh, language newspapers now you will see and you will be able to identify writers who write pro china uh, content so uh, it is very easy to identify i have a very uh, simple thumb rule to understand who is peddling the chinese narrative and who is not anything that is good and in favor of bharat is bharatiya narrative anything that is you know even slightly goes against Bhar- bharat's interest national interest of india it is a narrative Sponsored. from the enemy mm-hmm. that is being peddled by these people it is a if it is a chinese narrative then it has a very uh, you know slight hint of pro chinese view like for example what you said right now you know uh, india middle east europe corridor is complementary to bri if somebody says that it, that is the most stupidest thing that can be talked about okay india will never join bri it goes against its natural national interest if the simple understanding doesn't exist in the person who talks this narrative i mean i i am amazed by the kind of uh, ignorance that this person is ex- exhibiting okay. it's really amazing when you so, see stuff like this sir absolutely you're right sir so it it amazes me actually it's a, it shocks me in fact i mean uh, or maybe i should expect them to be uh, ignorant because they are uh, now eating the namak of that comes from shanghai so <laughs> the shanghai salt that they are they are consuming probably that is what is making them uh, you know speak or exhibit their ignorance or maybe they are doing it deliberately they are trying to i mean for example this rajiv sharma journalist who got arrested he deliberately peddled these kind of narratives saying that india needs to give up on dalai lama and hand him over he is a terrorist he should be handed over to the chinese for prosecution and all that so he did talk about this kind of uh, narratives and he did it deliberately he did it he did it for money that was his weakness okay so yeah, a lot of it. people would be doing that in fact a lot of think tanks do that there is an institute which does china studies that's the name also uh, <laughs> institute of china studies in uh, delhi they took money from both the government of india and the chinese embassy to study china and they followed the dictates of the chinese embassy more than what they contributed on china studies for the for the indian government that's a fact their researchers got sponsored access to china and they came back and wrote glowing tributes to uh, china instead of telling what is actual fact they didn't get to do a, an actual research okay and what is the contribution that they did for the money that they took from government of india what is the value add that they did to the indian government's knowledge on china zilch zilch okay so this 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 is where the problem lies actually so there are uh, thousands and thousands of people like that in the in the intellectual class who are willing to sell their soul for a few uh the dog bones that they get from china so that's the that's the truth you know the institute to chinese studies is really amazing this is uh, what does one say about that it is a amazing institution which has very little to talk about in terms of a, in terms of a address even so what much say anything more so my last question after that let's get into uh, this thing how can we play the game back with china sir so i have couple of chinese See, here um, 
one is of course uh, and both are the same namesake as a matter of fact and one is sitting in california who's a lady and the other is a chinese gentleman whose name is mingwu both are called mingwus mingwu by the way means anonymous in chinese so yeah <laughs> yeah right now i personally Let them feel listen and i'm very happy that they're listening in i personally so, uh... feel that these guys at the end of it the reason that they're coming out if it's mm-hmm. a general human being and a lot of them are a lot of them are those pinkos that roam around you know the wamos as they are called or the little pinks mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. they are called so we need to reeducate these guys also right how do we start doing that see essentially the the only counter that india can do or i mean we can't do a china on china so that's that is that is uh, not the right way to go i believe so the essentially what we need to do is though it is a long haul effort the only thing that we can do is to educate indians on the threat that uh, that exists on that. because mm. of these the the uh, threat that exists because of this influence operation that happens okay so also the threat to the democratic uh, institutions that we have so they can influence elections you know i gave you an example of how elections are funded how elections were funded in in canada and which has become a huge storm in canada mm. at this point in time mm. such kind of activities can happen even in india and probably it is already happening is what you is my uh, is the kind of information that i'm receiving and it will going to happen in the 2024 elections also so they are going to pump in money in various forms uh, through various routes and it's going to come here and uh, try to they will try to overcome this government in some manner uh, but essentially what is the advantage that modi has is that he has a government apparatus with him at this point in time which uh, probably he should, he should use to good effect and uh, to counter these people one number two is for uh, for people with uh, nationalist thought process people who align themselves with the bharatiya thought process with the uh, national interests of india should start educating like what you are doing at this point in time through your dev talk channel or through other, even there are plenty of them who are doing it right now and uh, probably there are, the effort needs to be doubled up or even tripled uh, in some some manner so that there are more people because people access uh, information today through their mobile phones yeah uh, so this kind of youtube channels and uh, other means uh, you know which essentially can be accessed through the mobile phones is the best means to reach the people in some manner and probably uh, that effort needs to happen in fact big political parties which align with nationalist interests which align with bharatiya thought process hmm. they also need to take campaign because they have a huge apparatus party infrastructure that they have so they can also do you know campaigns uh, or in national interest sometimes correct so mm-hmm. there are there are also big non governmental organizations huge the largest volunteer force in the world and all that which can also you know take up this kind of uh, activity campaign to alert people against the threat that exists and also to make them aware of the threat that exists uh, probably not uh, before 2024 elections but probably after 2024 elections if this government comes back back to power probably they need to uh, do more work in the academia through the education department ministry that they have to ensure that uh, this kind of uh, anti india thought process is is weeded out from these centers because the students youngsters are the future of this country and uh, i can't imagine i shudder to imagine a situation where uh, a majority of the youth population in india is is brainwashed uh, into peddling the chinese narrative so i i just shudder to think about such a situation so which will become a uh win win situation for the uh the radical elements and the the, the leftist 
uh, elements who always coordinate and come together. So that is the threat I foresee. And for that reason, probably countering needs to happen at a, at within India through public campaigns, through public awareness and educational programs. That, that's my view on this. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because it, there's no one solution to this. It's very difficult to kind of, uh, you know, uh, literally say what is, you know, what is the actual game. But I think what you brought out, and guys, I must say, you must read Sir's book. It, it, it tells you quite a bit. Of course, uh, we don't want to name names. It just gets into a whole lot of uh, rubbish. And, you know, that's not, that's not what we are trying to do here. We're trying to understand the concept of Chinese infiltration. And try and see what we can learn out of it and what we can where, where we can take this game forward. Because at the end of it, we need to first clean our house and then get into uh, actually creating simultaneously getting an opportunity to actually attack back. One of the things that uh, I would like to mention, and I really appreciate that you brought out, is that you've got a aspect where there is a gap in terms of an ideological preference or a political political politico ideological preference within the country which the chinese are exploiting the 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 senseless or if i may just blind hatred of modi is given a lot of people the opportunity to actually a lot of our enemies the opportunity to actually infiltrate into this so you know i i don't like to talk into a lot of politics but that that does make a lot of sense that uh, the Chinese also want a little weakened sort of a guy or want want him to be get removed. These guys want, want the same thing. So, chalo, TK, your friend is enemy of my, you know, uh, enemy of my enemy. Enemy my of friend. my enemy is a friend. <laughs> Simple straight. So, that's that's the, uh, you know, game that the Pakistanis played with the Chinese and they're playing it back. Let's get into some of your, some of the questions that the people have mentioned. Of course, these guys are getting... Yeah, there, is, the... there is There are two things I want to mention before sir, we please. go into the questions. Please, 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 sir, please. Absolutely. One, one is that, see, though my report exposes a lot of people, I must actually uh, tell, caution, that there are people who do this China narrative peddling deliberately on a quid pro quo basis by receiving money and there are people who have fallen prey to the brainwashing and the narrative building yeah, and the that propaganda is the most, that happens. The saddest part. Yeah. Yeah. So there are people who are gullible, who may not be doing it for uh, for a quid pro quo, but they have already fallen victim to the propaganda that has been happening. So uh, there are both these type of people. And in fact, after my report came out, some of these people have. Uh, done a course correction also. Let us be very clear about it. So, um, so there are this both these strands uh, that exist today in India, and I think the government needs to crack down on the people who take a do a quid pro quo work and educate people who are uh, essentially uh, doing innocent, having been brainwashed. So that that is the two differentiation I want to make. And you rightly pointed out one issue which I want to highlight: the uh, the political, politico, uh, ideological Ideology. narrative that you talked yeah. about. Mm. So it's a very important element in this uh, China uh, focus on India. Essentially, if you see the states where the Chinese are focusing and trying to do a greater amount of influence, or states where there is no. Uh, pro Modi or pro uh, central government uh, states, which are no central government pro states, like for example Tamil Nadu, mm. or Kerala, or Andhra Pradesh, or Telangana. Vulnerable. So these mm. are the state, or or even Punjab. So these are the states that are the main concentration for Chinese influence work. Uh, they also try to promote this. Uh, this radical uh, communalization that happens in these yeah, states. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. there is a social strife, there is political strife, there is social strife, there is a religious strife, there is caste strife. Manipur is one, is one good example where uh, the Chinese really had a hand in the communal strife that happened there, the community strife that happened there. So these are the states that they are focusing where there is a fault line, political fault line. 
so that 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 these are two things that i wanted to add to what you said now we can go into the questions yeah yeah absolutely sir i mean very important point uh guys let's get into your questions and most importantly here uh sabse zyada uh, you know importantly spread the word in terms of dev talks uh please like this video subscribe if and spread the word most 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 critically we've crossed a big milestone today of 90000 subscribers thanks to all of you guys and that can only happen when you guys press the like button and spread it out so you can contribute towards the dev talks efforts the qr code is up there or you can actually send us super stickers or super chats uh let's let's get into your questions uh manjri bhagwat ji thank you so much for your contribution he says why centers government stop funding why does why can't central why can't the government stop funds coming in from outside to these leftist organizations and individuals yeah in fact uh, manjri ji thank you very much for this question and uh, yes the government has acted i think i mentioned this about lot of ngos which were working against india's interests so there's their uh, fcra license has been cancelled by Cancel. the government which is also again again become a big uh, political controversy with this leftist ecosystem creating a huge uh, you know uh, talking point on this they have also gone to the courts uh, mm. against the government action in this regard yeah, yeah. and uh, i mean that is another topic for another day the leftist ecosystem in the judiciary <laughs> that we will we will talk another day but uh, by the way guys sir so, is a uh, just a lawyer so <laughs> <laughs> i am a practicing lawyer also yeah so uh so this is something that uh, you know that the government has already done in fact uh, the action against news click is one big example i in fact i mentioned about one uh, think tank which does china studies in delhi it, its government funding has dried up after our expose and uh, national interest china studies organizations are now receiving a part of i mean uh, the 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 pie has been divided among a few uh, china think tanks in mm. india which are doing work in national interest so that is a uh, that is a feedback that i want to give you guys uh, the government is conscious of this fact and then the fcra uh, license has been cancelled for several of them uh, that is that is one of the biggest in fact uh, the news click case fcra is one of the cases that that has been filed against pmla is uh, apart from the pmla sorry pmla is prevention of uh, money laundering act and fcra is foreign contribution regulation act so these two uh, laws is are being applied in the cases against uh, news click and other organizations that are there uh, which have been doing this hanky panky funding work jb jp thank you so much he says are turkish funded youtube channels in india as well quite possible uh, see that is quite possible because uh, Kashmir is a very important focus area for uh, Turkey, uh, Turkey, uh, <laughs> so as they call itself. So, uh, uh, I mean, in Hindi, this term <laughs> term has a slightly few pronounce it differently. It has a very yeah weird uh, different this meaning. Word, weird word meaning. Word so, so, yeah, Erdogan uh, essentially has interest. in becoming the caliphate the caliph of uh, the islamic world so he is essentially focusing and raising issues on kashmir so there are uh, channels which peddle this turkish view point on kashmir and on islamic issues you know in on, on on the uh, question of youtube channel sir there is this channel in china i don't want to name the person i think the minute i describe everybody will know who it is this person sits inside china has a chinese wife ठीक है एंड ही सिट्स इनसाइड चाइना एंड अब्यूजेस चाइना इन हिंदी ओके इंटरेस्टिंग एंड पीपल थिंक दैट गाइस ओह ये तो बड़ा सच बोलता है आई हैड अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल कमिंग एंड टेलिंग मी कि यार यू वर चाइना सो क्लोजली कॉल दिस गाय ही विल बी एबल टू गिव यू सम इनसाइट्स आई ऑलमोस्ट हेल्ड माय हेड आई सेड यार यार द ओनली इनसाइट विल आई विल गिव हिम हिज माय होम एड्रेस बिकॉज़ दैट गाय इज गोना पुट समबडी आउटसाइड माय हाउस आफ्टर दैट या वी हैव टू बी केयरफुल who you believing because a chinese wife inside china 
in fact yeah i mean that that brings me to this very interesting thing that i want to tell you about nevil roy singham he lives in shanghai which i mentioned earlier yeah, yeah. in fact his address office address in shanghai is also the address of uh, waku group of china which is a media house and their stated objective is to uh spread the china story on a global stage yeah basically a propaganda tool of the uh, of the mss essentially okay of the uh, united front works department so he shares his office and uh, in fact if you uh, people the reports that i read about this their offices it says that when you go to the office particularly this new york times report which which also brought out this news click aspect it says that if you go to that office you won't be able to differentiate between this waku group office and the and this guy devil rising in this office it's one and the same and the, this fellow has the temerity to come and say that no no i'm not funding news click so look at the kind of uh, you know I mean, uh, yeah yeah is the same in pakistan so these so called youtube channels in pakistan who sit down and abuse pakistan all day long but if you actually listen to them very carefully they'll abuse for 20 minutes but that fact, 30 uh, seconds yeah. in the middle he'll put in one criticism of uh, you know india and Correct. which because he's so, abusing pakistan so well you will actually believe the criticism of india and say ha yaar hmm. ye to problem hai ha uh, correct so essentially yeah i mean it's a, it's a psychology uh, yeah it's a psychological, uh, psychological trick that they are adopting game that they are adopting in fact uh, uh, adi there are a lot of indian journalists who went and worked uh, uh, in uh, in the chinese media i mean the, oh, yeah. in china yeah, in yeah. beijing for the chinese media which were running english hindi tamil telugu uh, you know uh, media outlets for the indian audience so i don't trust any of them because all of them are essentially uh, people who have been uh, co-opted into the ufd work you know different departments work and they have they have come back to india after their indoctrination and uh, i mean i'm very wary of these people these people mm, who absolutely claim or say that i i worked in china for this hindi channel i worked in china for this uh, tamil Uh, online website and all that when they say that i'm i'm little wary of these guys <laughs> yeah. we need to be very careful about these guys pratmesh ask i've seen many pro russian accounts turning into chinese propaganda pro palestine narrative mostly fake ones on twitter lack of depth or sold out i'd say both i would say both <laughs> i would say both <laughs> <laughs> see essentially i'm telling you these are uh these are propaganda tools that that have been created for specific purposes okay so if for example this uh, if you you know watch x formerly twitter in 2023 there are humpty number of uh, india indian sounding names that have created accounts some people claim they live in london some people claim they live in uh, brussels some claim they they live in uh, some some foreign land and they start abusing india they start abusing modi and all that okay so these are all handles paid handles created by somebody sitting in pakistan and trying to peddle this narrative okay i mean this reminds me of this uh, six for justice this uh, mm. good pandit uh, pannu uh, uh, pannu ha uh, pannu that fellow uh, sf sfj and this uh, referendum websites had a karachi address for a very long time yeah yeah long time the same Even now sir. the Even same now. address mm. same address so they both have the same address in fact uh, that is a clear giveaway that pakistan is funding him yeah yeah okay. so the similarly mark- if you online please sir if you watch these propaganda handles i mean the one that uh, your uh, audience the question that was asked most of these russian handles would be uh, 
you know by some chinese uh, the 50 cent army it is quite possible okay so they are all propaganda handles let us be wary of these kind of handles you know guys i mentioned this in today afternoon show and i'm say the say this again sfj's entire online campaign is carried out by a chinese tech security firm called chiho right yeah chiho 360 the company is bank going bankrupt right now but that's the thing how do you defeat this unholy alliance between the islamist and the left every aspect of it in every avenue sir your view essentially political awareness so educate people you you take it as a mission to educate 100 people on this aspect i will educate 100 and as those 100 people to educate another 100 each of them so that is the only only way multi level education program <laughs> correct sir absolutely so that is that is the only way you can uh, counter unless people are aware see for example i am telling you i mean i've been watching this uh, one particular video on a loop for a very long time i mean in the recent days i watched it on a loop at one point uh, there is a group of students who went to in front of a college gate chanting hanuman chaliza because mm. two women teachers in that college stopped the st- student on on stage from responding to a jai shri ram slogan that was raised from the audience okay i i was watching it in a loop when awareness is created people will stand up for the rights this kind of nationalist uh, rights yeah yeah okay so uh, i have no doubt about it so the, teach 100 people and ask the each of the 100 people to teach an 100 more each of them so that is the way to go forward of course the government is doing its own effort i am talking about the effort that common man like you and me ordinary people like you and me can do if you are an aware conscious citizen please make another 100 people also to be conscious and aware of the threats that are posed by this islamist radical islamists and the left ecosystem absolutely sharda ji asks uh, if if we focus on the left of center crowd most of them seem to be the ones suffering from canolian canolian brainwash hangover what is the best logic with works with them and surrounded by them all of us are why do you want to why do we why do we want to argue with them logically they logic doesn't work with them please so it is best to ignore them they are becoming irrelevant in india slowly of course they have their ecosystem at this point in time and they are also getting support from foreign foreign need they are getting that's that's okay that's okay see politically if you are able to defeat them okay they will die of heartburn themselves so don't don't worry too much about uh, trying to convince them in any manner okay in fact uh, one of my friend who's of my own age he has a young boy a college going kid who was a woke until recently okay what opened his eyes he went and told his father that my eyes have been opened now after the amma's attack on october 7th he came and told his father i have been wrong all these days now this incident has opened my eyes and he apologized to his dad for having argued with you on this aspect for a very long time i am extremely sorry a college going kid who was until recently woke he shed all his wokeism and uh, he now truly believes uh, that there is there is evil that is going to eat this country out and we need to fight it okay so they are digging their own grave this leftist islamist radical islamist ecosystem is digging its own grave why do we have to uh, you know argue logic with them they will understand the people who want to understand who are ignorant and innocent they will understand and they will uh, turn to uh, protect this country on their own let it, let us not worry absolutely. about it absolutely correct sir absolutely shankar so says just, uh, just keep doing just do keep doing your own work of educating 100 people in this regard that's it absolutely considering all info warfare complications will it be fair and effective indian narrative if we say that india and china don't share a border and india tibet do this absolutely is it is an india tibet border yeah please yes adi no this is a question which which is 
I mean, pondered upon, spoken about by pretty much everyone that we Everybody. should stop calling. I mean, it is, it is. I, I never call it as a. I mean, what I call it as an Indo-Tibet border. I don't call it as what you are trying to. I actually uh, call it the northern borders. <laughs> northern <laughs> borders is <laughs> that, that is yeah. Northern Easy. borders. In, Indo-Tibet border is, is uh, the right term to use. Yeah. And uh, if you notice even some uh, Indian government organizations have started using this term, Indo-Tibet border. But I one thing is there, sir. Leave it at that. It's an hint. <laughs> one thing is there, sir. I must say. Chinese are as vulnerable as anybody else. Yeah, they are. See, they have Stuff a lot of... Go, uh, goes inside. Points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have Stuff a lot of goes inside points. really fast. Yeah. They have that their own pain points. We should yeah, know how, yeah. to, how to... How to how prick to them. Prick them and twist their uh, pain point so that it pains more. I will tell you that... ये जो दो तीन चार चाइनीज आते हैं और मेरे कमेंट्स में भी जाके पढ़िए काफी सारे आपको देखेंगे चाइनीज कमेंट्स आपको दिख जाएगा जस्ट द शेयर फैक्टर कि वो इतने सारे यहां पर भटकते हैं आपको समझ में आना चाहिए कहीं ना कहीं हम लोग जो बोल रहे हैं या तो चुभ रहा है या फिर उनको पता है यार ये कुछ उल्टा बोल रहा है जरा सुन लेते हैं इसकी बात फिर अपने आप रिसर्च कर लेंगे बाद में इदर वेज इट इट वर्क्स फॉर अस या इट वर्क्स फॉर अस in fact, a glo- I I wear it on my sleeve as a as a badge. Of as honor, a badge. I don't like yeah. talking to Global Pakistanis. Times, <laughs> Global Times wrote wrote an article, wrote two articles against me uh, and against my organization. Uh, I wear it as a badge of honor. <laughs> so when <laughs> Pakistanis come to my chat, different. I remove them. When Chinese come to the chat, they're okay. Red, no problem. Red, no problem. Kunal, uh, sir, why is there no action against the leftist anti-national by the government? They know very well who these guys are. Income tax department, ED should be given a free hand to act on such traitors. Yeah, I mean, you are absolutely right. I agree with you on that. But the only thing is, there has to be a trigger at some level for uh, for the action to happen. Like, for example, in the case of News Click, the action started uh, much before the New York Times article came out, but there was a trigger to that action. Okay, so essentially, what I mean by trigger is that uh, there has to be a media reporting on this, on some aspect, or uh, there has to be some actionable intelligence that is provided to the government on some aspects. Now, see, even in this program that we have been, uh, me and Adi, we have been discussing it. I have given certain hints certain people operating from Noida, running a magazine and all that. So the government has enough, uh, I mean, if it thinks it's a trigger enough, they can do some investigation on their own. They can start an investigation. Okay. And uh, skeletons will tumble out. I am very sure of that. And, you know, if I may add something, a lot of the times government will do investigations. And trust me, a lot of the time, these agencies will let these people be in their role. Because sometimes... They have to do more mistakes. Sometimes these... That is one. Sometimes these people are more valuable on the field rather than in jail. That is also true. So, but, yeah. You know, that's that's something I've noticed. With the with the whole game of Amrit Pal Singh, mm-hmm. that's something that came out that... Everybody See, knew who, where he was. Nobody just went and picked this, him up. Uh, this Krishna Shishupal uh, example mm. is a right example. Allow them to make 100 mistakes. Let them caught, get caught in their own uh, uh, you know, uh, make-believe world. Make-believe world and get caught in their own quagmire. Okay. So, <laughs> and when the right, right time comes, the government will strike against them. Absolutely. Uh, Till very the time important. let them do the mistakes. Yeah. Very important. Second last question we will take, sir. Batraji says, uh, what do we do about the Chinese entering India with Nepalese passport? Yeah, this is something that we wanted to discuss today. And uh, I, you know, he put this uh, question out. I said, Chalo, we will take it up and he, you know. Right. Absolutely. I mean, happy that he asked this question because this was something which we wanted to discuss, but we missed out. See, this is not a new phenomenon, but 
it has come into limelight in the recent times because uh, people have got caught and have been arrested by the uh, you know by the immigration department and the and the enforce uh, uh, agencies that are there enforcement agencies that are there along the borders especially ssb that is sasastra zimbabwe earlier this month arrested two people on two different days uh, in fact the interesting aspect of it is that both of them had indian passports with them fake indian passports when it was verified it was found to be fake both the addresses that they gave both of them mentioned that they are indian uh, uh, nationals uh, who are coming from nepal to visit their go back to their families living in darjeeling okay and uh, when the addresses were checked which was there on the passport it turned out to be fake in the sense that uh, there was no passport that was issued on that particular address by the indian uh, ministry of external affairs the passport offices had never issued such a passport at all so that is how this fellow got caught and uh, when the searches were done on him they found uh, the true genuine chinese passport also with with one of the guys uh, these are these are two different incidents uh, uh, we should know that so this has happened but this is not uh, new it's not an october phenomenon even in july last this july several such cases have been uh, has come out people have been arrested chinese nationals have been arrested who came into india with nepalese passport even in the two cases that i mentioned they also had a nepalese passport with them so let us and that was also fake in fact the, the government has uh, you know cracked down on people who have been issuing this kind of fake passports uh, on the indian side also uh, in connected to these incidents so in the case of the jola incidents they came into india with nepalese passport but i mean i think uh, your audience is a knowledgeable audience they already know that uh, we have a free uh, to and fro border with nepal, with nepal. anybody mm-hmm. can come in and go there is no need for a visa or a thing but if you are coming to india a nepali citizen with a nepali passport coming to india say from uh, you know a place in pakistan from karachi or say from maldives there are five six countries like that china anywhere from china macau ya shanghai they are coming into india from these places even if they have nepali citizen and have a nepali passport they need to have a visa before they can come from these places okay so this nepali route to coming into india have been misused not in the recent times but for a very long time by pakistani no. isi agents terrorists terror groups they have been making use of this route in fact there was this recent case of a lady who uh, found a lover online and then she yeah, yeah. came into india what seema either ha huh. seema either i think that is her yeah. name if i yeah, recall yeah. correctly yeah. she also came through the same nepali route nepal route she came to india from nepal route in fact indian government have caught a lot of uh, laid a bait and caught a lot of uh, terrorists in nepal uh, there is one uh, bollywood hindi movie also that was made i think uh, what's that name called as baby i think that's the name of the movie so it was a recent uh, movie akshay kumar was the hero in that movie uh, with uh, what is her name uh, that actress uh, I so no idea. yeah there is there is a movie also made made in this in this on this phenomena of how bollywood and movies is like something yeah i i i mean i don't watch uh, i'm i'm clean bold somebody says that i am completely <laughs> so that is why i'm not able to recall even the actress's name so i'm not i'm not too keen on <laughs> this thing but of course i because it is a spy subject uh, it came to my notice uh, recently uh, uh, you know and uh, somebody had talked about it and i watched that movie specifically because it was uh, on the subject of uh, spying okay so in the recent times uh, kishanganj district in bihar is which borders uh, you know uh, both it's right near the chicken neck uh, bordering bengal west bengal and nepal with a large uh, radicalized population so i just want to mention that so that is one important route that these uh, chinese nationals take 
trying to enter India using a Nepali passport or something like that. Even Indian passports are being used by these guys to come in. So, uh, uh, so uh, you know, this is something that uh, India is aware of now in a much more uh, serious manner. And they are trying to put in place some curbs. Because anybody who crosses, they are absolutely they are checked. If the person doesn't look like a, a Nepali citizen or something like that. In the, in the case of these two people, they had a very typical uh, non-Nepali look. So, and a non-Indian look. So, that is how they got caught. If it is Chinese national, uh, particularly in areas bordering Nepal on the other side, on China side, they may have some you know similarity with uh, with the Nepali population. But even despite that, the language that they speak, the Nepali language that they speak is a major give out. So, the accent definitely comes in. I'm being mm. a person from Tamil Nadu, if I speak Hindi, till the time I open my mouth, they think I'm from North India. The moment I open my mouth, they know that I'm from South India. So it, it, the accent will never go away. How much ever training you do, how much ever effort that you make, somewhere, some word, you will have that accent that will give you out as, as a non-native speaker. So that is how these people get caught easily also. Uh, this this phenomenon is, is a fact and uh, the government is aware of it. They are already taking action. Indian security agencies are watchful of this phenomena and they are doing whatever is necessary to be done in this regard. As a matter of fact, uh, just to close this uh, discussion, one of the reasons I'd like to say this very clearly to everybody that the sheer factor that stuff is getting caught tells you that the counter, uh, you know, counter espionage does work. Yes, because the counter intelligence yes. is not working, all these people will not get caught. So that's the most important thing. So whenever you read that some guy caught caught in a you know uh, a honey trap or something like that, just understand that your counter intel and the counter surveillance is working and it works really well. That's why you're able to catch these guys. So correct, this all will happen. So yeah, and also the fact that uh, the recent events in India have a very clear pointer of. Uh, Chinese intelligence agents uh, infiltrating and doing some, uh, uh, what do you call it as, uh, some activity which, which is in, against Indian national interest. So that have come out in several places in the recent times. So yeah. because of which uh, the the security agencies got activated on, on uh, these aspects. So. Sure. Thanks, sir. This was wonderful. Thank you so much for spending time with me and, you know, helping us understand this whole... Uh, game of the Chinese narrative. It is very interesting and important that we need to understand. It's a very serious subject. It does not have any breaking news, any fire masala or anything like that. But there's a constant threat that we have and we need to keep ourselves updated. So once again, sir, thank you so so much and see you once again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Adi. Thank you for this opportunity. It's a pleasure, particularly because the audience engagement is quite high for your program. And I love the questions that come from your very intelligent, knowledgeable and a discerning audience. Thank you very much to all your Thank audience. You. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I ask all your people who are watching this program to uh, scan the QR code that's there and uh, contribute so that we can do more work. Me and Adi can do more work in this regard. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.